Hi everyone, it's Kay Kalta. Welcome to a Stampin' Chat with Kay. Oh, good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Elaine. Hi, Yvonne. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining in today. We're going to make a box. Yes, it's rare that I do a 3D item, but I'm going to do that today. Um, this is actually something that you guys picked for me to do. I put this up on August 1st. A crumb cake card, a pool party card, or a box, and everybody picked the box. So we're going to make the box today. People are giving me crap because I don't do a lot of 3D, so we'll see how this goes today. Thank you. Hi, Grace. Hello, Andrea. I should say Andy. I know that people call you Andy. Nice to have you here. Good morning, Sharon. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Oh, she can only stay a few minutes. Well, I'm glad you're getting in on a few minutes. You know, you guys can always catch the replay. Hello, Jeanette. Hi, Connie. Oh my goodness, so many people joining us. You are all excited about the box, aren't you? <laughs> oh dear. Well, let me finish up my coffee and we'll get started. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Get it actually off my desk. We have a lot of ink pads on the desk today. We're going to be doing some brayering. That's always kind of fun. All right. Hi, Dawn. Good morning. Oh, you are so cute. Cute. Yeah, we had our demo meeting last night. It was really fun. Um, in fact, I'm going to show one of Dawn's cards. We have a couple of cards here that I'm going to share. All right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I am going to flip the camera down and go over a few things that are current right now with Stampin' Up! And then we are going to do the box. So let me do that. Give me a couple seconds here to adjust that camera. All right, let's get started. Okay, good morning. Oh my, so many of you. Thank you. You know, I am going to do a little giveaway today. Well, not today. Today is Friday, so this will be on Monday morning. And the thing that I'll be sharing with you is the little 3x3 three three cards. So I'll give away one of each. And then along with that, I'll send along some flax ribbon. As you can see uh, on the catalog page where I copied this from, I believe it's page 97, there was a little flax ribbon that put the put a little 3x3 three three card and a little 3x3 three three envelope on there. So let me talk about the box in just a second. I do want to share that if you are one of my customers and plan on placing an order, remember to redeem your bonus days coupons. That is an option for you through um, August 31st, provided that you placed at least a $50 uh, increment on your order last month. You got a $5 coupon. So I know some of my customers accumulated a few of those. So I've already seen some of you redeem them. If you need any help with that, or if you can't find your bonus days coupons, please contact me and I will assist you. This month, when you use my host code through 820 of 19, you will receive, and, your, and if the host code associated with or, your order if that order is at least 75, you will receive in September these really pretty, um, what are they? The Perennial Essence Floral Centers, I believe is the name of them. And I've got a beautiful card to share with you that uses one of those floral centers. Just gorgeous. So that's the gift with purchase when you place a $75 order using a host code. Now remember, if your order is over 150, you don't use a host code because you get all my little gifts. Um, but I wanted to share that because I know quite a few of you kind of cut it off around 75 or 100. And then finally, we have the extra extra $99 starter kit. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you have a big long wish list, oh, just wait till you see the holiday catalog. You think you've had a wish list. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. The holiday catalog is amazing. And so if you'd like to get a 20% discount on all future purchases with Stampin' Up, just get that little starter kit for 99. Right now you get to pick an extra 
extra, well, an extra $30 because normally it's a good deal at $125 in your starter kit for $99, but right now you get an additional $30 more. So basically for $99, you get $155 worth of product. So it's a super good deal. I have two new downline members this month that are taking advantage of it. So welcome to my, my Stamping to Share Creative Crafters group. Thank you for joining us, Shirley, and also Luz. Both of you joined our team this month. So, so happy to have you here. Thank you, thank you. Now, let me share that card with you from my downline member, Dawn. We had our demo meeting last night, and she gave this to me. And it is so pretty. It uses one of those floral centers from the Perennial Essence Embellishments. And isn't it beautiful? So this also uses this small, uh, medium, well, it's actually called a medium-sized daisy punch. And it really coordinates well with the larger daisy punch that we've had in our catalog over a year. And so you can make really sweet flowers. And she also used, let me check the name of it, the Pressed Petals Specialty Designer Series Paper. There's some pieces on that paper that you can cut out and just put right on top of your card front. And it's lovely. Look at how nice that looks. And with that sweet uh, daisy flower up here and then all these daisies, everything just coordinates so well. And another thing that looks really, really good with the Press Petals paper is the beautiful scalloped lace trim. This is a new design in our catalog. And what I love about it is it seems a little bit more see-through than the previous lace trim that we had. I love that you can kind of just see a little bit of the designer paper in the background. That is so pretty. And then some of the stamps that Dawn used on this card include the Label Me Pretty, uh, punch out right here and then she also used the kindness and compassion stamp on the inside panel her mother recently passed away and I had sent a card and Dawn was so sweet she turns right around and gives me a card back for um, doing that for her so thank you Dawn I love this card it's so gorgeous all right, another card I'd like to share is something that was demonstrated by one of my downline members last night at our meeting, and she demonstrated how to use your stamps to make an impression in embossing, or in heat embossing. And so, first of all, this is a gorgeous card. Let me just share with you that she is using the Floral Essence uh, image here on her pressed item. And then she's also using the perennial birthday stamp set for the sentiments on this card. And then she used the layered leaves embossing folder. And doesn't that look fantastic with the gold foil? But the real highlight of this card is the center panel here, the center image. And let me bring this up to the camera so you can see it. But what she did is she just heat embossed with gold powder over and over till she had five layers. And then while it was still really hot, she took her stamped image, she put it in Versamark, and she quickly stamped it on this uh, embossed piece while it was still hot. And then when she pulled the stamp away, you get this really beautiful embossed image that you can use on your card. And it's just such a lovely idea. So thank you so much to my downline member, Mary Smallage, who created this card last night at our demonstrator meeting. And then she was so nice, she left it with me so that I can put it in my displays, which I really love. It's so pretty. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm going to do a little giveaway on Monday. I'll do a yard of flax ribbon to our winners. And then our winners will be receiving look at three by th a three by three card each and these cards are so cute I made them so that they would coordinate with our cute little box that we're going to make today all right so how do you get in this little drawing all you have to do is comment as we're going along either right now or during the rebroadcast you can come in and see this anytime I won't do the drawing until Monday morning and then the other way is to um, be sure that you 
share this if you think this is fun and helpful and you have friends who might enjoy this you can share this video on your timeline be sure you let me know that you shared and I'll make sure that your name goes in the drawing if maybe you're not into that and you do like what I do just like this video give me a, some thumbs ups or some hearts or something like that so that I know you uh, are enjoying what we're doing here today all right so let's go ahead and make this box so let me show you the box again now I was thinking now Stampin Ops box let me just show you oh my gosh I'm so confused here hold on I got to show you in the catalog what we're doing because before we get too far into this whoops wrong page here we go page 97 last week I put up these three items you chose the box for me to recreate and this is all made using the Daisy Delight stamp set which is pretty fun so let me show you that stamp set whoops wrong stamp set here it is Daisy Delight it does coordinate with the large Daisy punch in the catalog but we're not using that today but I did want to show you how that does coordinate then Stampin' Up! saw how popular this was because we all loved making the daisies. They saw how popular it was and they went out and they created another coordinating stamp set that you can purchase in our annual catalog and it's called the Daisy Lane. And you can actually get that as a bundle. So you can purchase it, the stamp set and the punch and save 10% when you purchase it as a bundle. So this is the coordinating set. And I do have another card that I'll probably be sharing, probably not next week, but maybe the week after that uses the Daisy Lane. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it's so cute. All right. So let me go ahead now and grab the supplies and we'll make our box. And you know what? Let me run across the room because, you know, one of the most important things about making a box is you need a whole bunch of score lines to uh, create your box so let me let me grab my scoring tool it's kind of big and bulky so I didn't want to put it on my desk until I actually needed it but Stampin' Up! sells something called the Simply Scored scoring tool and you know what you guys this is I think this is a must-have I use this with every single card and every single box that I create so I have it all set up for where it needs to be scored today. But I would say if you don't have this tool in your uh, craft room, you're kind of missing out. It makes things so much easier to fold. And it just gives you such a professional look on your projects. So what you're going to start with is, hold on. I'm just grabbing all the goodies that we need here. You're going to start with a three and a half by nine and a half inch piece of paper and then on the short side you're gonna score it at two and a half and on the long side of that paper you're gonna score it at three and one fourth four and one fourth seven and a half and eight and a half all right so let me show you how that's going to work so and this particular piece of paper is terracotta so it's the terracotta color so we are going to score it at two and a half first so I'm just gonna take my score tool go to the two and a half inch mark and score down that's going to be the bottom of our box then we can go ahead and that was the short side then we're gonna put it on the long side and we're gonna make these scores we're gonna score at three and a quarter which you know what Good thing I looked at this because I didn't, <laughs> you know, with bifocals, everything could be just a little bit off. Good thing I looked. So we're going to score at three and a quarter, four and a quarter, uh, seven and a half, and eight and a half. And this is where we're going to be folding to create our box. You're going to have a funky little square down here, and you're going to actually cut that off. So we're going to cut that funky little spot off and then we can go ahead and make our box. So there we go. All right, so let me move the scoring tool out of the way. I have to get up and put it somewhere else because I have not one spot to put it on my desk. 
Okay, the other thing that I find extremely helpful when you're making a box, of course, is your, um, what do you call this? A bone folder. Yes, you need that. So before I actually cut anything else, I'm going to use my bone folder. So I'm going to press down all of these folds wherever there's a score line. And I think there's one more here. There we go. Then go ahead and you're going to trim up. You're going to trim up the bottom of your box. So you're just going to trim up to this little section here. Oh, goodness. Hello, Pam. Welcome. Hi, Kay. Welcome. Hi, Candace. Candace says she's a daisy kind of girl. Yay, so am I, I love it. And what I'm doing is on these little tiny flaps, I am just gonna trim off just the various tiniest little bit of excess on each side so that they fold in really nicely and don't cause your box to not go together well. So just on these little tiny ones. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So what that looks like is when you set it down, you're gonna see just the smallest little gap here, but that helps your box fold in better. The other thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to backwards score everything because when you're doing a box, you want everything really flexible. So I'm just going back through and backwards scoring. All right. Now everything is super flexible and we're ready. I don't think I backwards scored that one. Now we're ready to go ahead and assemble. So it's easy to assemble these little boxes. So your, I like to use glue. Glue just works super well because um, you have that little bit of wiggle room. And we're gonna go ahead and just add a little glue to this, to this very last flap. And then we're gonna set this side over on top of it. Just give that a chance to, to uh, adhere and then the glue holds it forever and ever. So this will be the back of your box. That's where the seam line is. And then what I do is I put my inner flaps in and let's see, where's the back of my, wherever my back, wherever the back of my box is, then I start with that flap and then this flap goes down like this. And then I just put glue on that last flap and bring it up. So there we go, we have our box made. And this is a one inch box. And so what that means is you'll be able to put, you'll be able to put easily uh, several three by three cards in there. So I've got one wrapped up with ribbon as a decoration. The other thing you can put in a box like this is maybe a candy bar or some little treats. Just to kind of show, I took a, a three by three post-it note and that fits in there really well as well. So that makes a really cute little gift that you could give to someone. And the post-it notes, you know, if you have coworkers and you just want to make something really cute to give at Christmas time or maybe um, they do, do they even have Secretary Day? I remember when I was in college, they used to have Secretary's Day. I'm not even sure if they do that anymore. Probably not. But if you want to surprise your coworkers, I think post-it notes is a cute little thing. And like, who doesn't use post-it notes? So that's something that could go in this box as well. All right, so we're gonna take this out because we still have to work on the box because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this little panel here to decorate our box. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised how we do this. So let me go ahead and grab the next item that we need. Okay, whoops, I just grabbed the post-it. Here we go. So you're going to need Whisper White. This is two and a half inches by three and one fourth inches. 
So where this is going to be going on your box is it's going to go flush side to side and flush to the bottom of your box and then that gives it a nice little border at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, I don't know, I just have the Stampin' Mat out because, because I do. I think, am I stamping with, yeah, I'm stamping with photopolymer so I wanted to have that here. Then of course I just have some scrap paper here. Oh. So Linda is telling me it's not necessarily Secretary's Day. It's called Administrative Professionals Day, and it's usually in April. I love it. Thank you. Or, or Andy's saying Professional Assistant Day. Perfect. I'm so glad you guys were able to clarify that for me. All right. Now, I know you can't really see this. Darn it, huh? I should have used colored scrap, but I didn't. Well, you'll see it as it shows up. So we've got some balmy blue ink. That's the first thing we're going to start with. And I've got our little sponge brayer from Stampin' Up. So we're going to ink up the sponge with our sponge brayer. No, we're going to ink up the sponge brayer with balmy blue ink. I knew that didn't sound right. And then what I do is I just start rolling it across. And you can go kind of as much as you want to get it to the look that you want. There we go. I'm going to bring the color down just a little bit more. There. Now, as you know, the color will lighten up a little bit as it dries. It kind of looks a little bit intense, but it's all going to turn out great once it dries up a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another sponge brayer. I happen to have two here. We're going to use old olive ink and we're going to put the grass in. So inking up the sponge brayer with old olive. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put the old olive at the bottom. This is going to be our ground. All right, and you'll notice there's a little bit of a white highlight here between where I did the ground and where I did the sky. That's a little bit too dramatic, so I'm going to go in, just add the littlest bit more here and not make it quite so white. So we still have a really nice dividing line. You can still see that it's not too intense through there. Um, but now, but now my ground is a little more even and I like it better. All right. So, so that is done for now. You know, as long as we're sponging, we're going to be making these cute little cards here. So let's go ahead and sponge what we need to do that. So let me grab some scrap paper here. So this is just a piece of whisper white scrap again. And before I do the sponging, I'm going to take our, where did it go? I know I had them here before because I had to move them out of the way. Oh, here it is. You'll notice on this little three by three card that we have a beautiful little layer back here. This is made with our Starburst punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch that out first. And then we're just going to set this aside. We're going to use that when we make the 3x3 three three card. Now what we're going to do is a little more sponging to create our cute little 3x3 three three card. So um, again, we're going to start with Balmy Blue and our little sponge brayer. And these sponge brayers are actually something you can purchase in the Stampin' Up! catalog. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll that here on the scrap. And if you do a big, a, a long enough one, you'll be able to get several punch outs, which is kind of nice if you're going to be making multiple cards. All right, so we've got our blue on. Then we're going to go ahead and put the ground in with our green. So you can kind of see how I'm doing that here. So we're just going to sponge in the ground. It's really fun if 
you guys haven't tried uh, brayering with the new sponges from Stampin' Up! Well, I shouldn't say this is new. We've had this for a while. Um, but it might be new to you. It's really fun to do. So now we're ready to go with that. So let's go ahead and do the punch out for that. And again, this lightens up a little bit once it dries. So to do my punch out for what we're going to layer here over the top of this Starburst punch out, we're going to take the two inch circle punch. And, and what I love about brayering this all on scrap is you can decide how much ground you want showing. So I'm going to go as close to this edge as I can. And here's a little punch out for the three by three card we're making. And it looks so cute already. And do I have enough room? I do. I just barely have enough room to do another punch out here. So I can make an additional card because I always do two giveaways. Again, to get in the giveaway, it's real helpful. If you share this video, let me know that you've shared or just comment. Tell me where you're watching from. Good morning, Amy. Hello. It's so nice to have you here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little stamping. So I've got my panel that we're putting on our box. Let me flip one of these papers over here. And we're going to do all the stamping of all this foliage. So there's a lot going on here. So to make it simple, let me tell you what I did. First of all, I took the stamp. Let me show you which one it is got to grab it. So this little flower stamp, everything is stamped, determined by where these flowers are. So what I did is I took this flower stamp and I just stamped it a couple of times on, um, on a piece of post-it note paper. And then I cut it out so that I would have these little flower images all set up on a post-it note. And what I'm going to do is set these kind of where I want them on my, on my piece here. So I think like this. And then I want another one over here about like that. And now we're ready to do our stamping because, all, like I said, all the stamping kind of depends on where these flowers are at. So let me get this one a little bit more over. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab Old Olive ink. Old Olive is so nice for stamping stems and leaves. I love it. And we're going to take the little stem for the daisies and we're just going to stamp some daisy stems on here. And then we've got one more right here. There we go. So all of our little daisy stems are stamped. But as you know, there's a lot more going on than just daisy stems. So we've got to do a little bit more. So I've got this little guy. We're going to ink him up and we're going to stamp him really close to this right edge. And maybe in here. And then over here. And then we have a whole little crew of foliage here, little grass stems or something. We're going to stamp it there. And we're just going to fill this in. So one more right here. So now we've got a bunch of foliage on there, which looks pretty good. But Stampin' Up! even went a step further when they designed this, and they added some really pretty... Um, toppers to these foliage pieces. So let me go ahead and take these little things off. All right, and then let me grab these. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp that, that whole bunch of stems. There's actually a stamp that will line up with that. It looks like this. So we're going to use Blackberry Bliss for that. So I'm going to be stamping that three times. So let me ink it up, and we'll just put this right here. So there's the first one. There's the second one. And finally, the third one. And that looks really cute. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the coral, or well it's kind of a corally color. We're going to take terracotta tile, which is one of our new in colors, and we're going to stamp those really long stems that we did. So I've got those right, make sure it's right side up here. Let's stamp those right like that. And then we've got one over here. And I feel like I have one more. Here it is. Sometimes it gets a little hard to see where to go. There we go. So now everything is stamped up and it's ready for us to stamp those pretty little flowers. So let me bring the box back in. And we're going to be stamping these little flowers right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper which looks like this, just a piece of Whisper White scrap. And then I'm going to take, oh dear, where did it go? I wonder where that went. Oh, here it is. We're gonna take this little burst of daisies and we're inking it up in terracotta tile and we wanna do three of them. And then we're gonna color them and cut them out. So I did pre-cut these, so don't worry. You guys don't have to sit here and watch me cut them out. However, one thing I want to point out is how to color them. So to color these, you're going to use your Wink of Stella, your clear Wink of Stella, and you're going to very, very lightly color it with some ink from your terracotta. So I, I press the lid or the the uh, stamp case together so I could get a little pool of ink. Then I'm going to take my Wink of Stella and I'm just going over here where I hardly have any color at all and what you'll do is start bringing that tiny bit of color and Wink of Stella over onto your flower. So I'll do one of these and then hold it up to the camera so you can see just how beautiful this is. And this, again, is one of those things where if you see it in real life, it just takes your breath away. Of course, you know, little sparkles don't show up that good on photographs or probably not even in video. So our lucky winners on Monday will be able to see this in person, and it's just knock dead, knock dead gorgeous. So here's what it looks like up close. I'll see if I can get that to sparkle a little bit. But it's so very, very pretty. Okay, and as I mentioned, I have these all ready. So we're just going to flip these over. Of course, you do have to fussy cut. That's probably going to be the longest part of the project is doing all that fussy cutting. So we're going to take our, our uh, take your pick tool. I'm going to grab off some mini dimensionals. This is where the minis come in so handy. I mean, you could get a full-size dimensional to fit on these flowers, but you'd have to be really careful. You'd have to position them just right. The minis are perfect. So then we can take the little peelies off. And we'll grab the box, or we'll grabbing the, we're not grabbing the box just yet. We're grabbing that little panel that I'm working with except I can't find it. Oh my goodness. Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. So take your pick tool, pick up your flower and position it in here just where you want it and then drop it in and do the same thing with all of these flowers. So I love the take your pick tool for this. And then one more. So pretty, isn't it pretty, you guys? I got a little duber here. I don't know what that is. I didn't notice it before, but I must have um, knocked a little color up there. So anyway, it's still pretty cute, and I don't think your average person's gonna notice that. I shouldn't have even brought it up. Isn't it funny how we always notice our mistakes? Like the whole thing is just, it's really, really gorgeous. And then I sit here and focus on the one thing that's wrong. How sad is that? I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna try to improve on that so I'm not always pointing out my mistakes. All right, so what do we need next? Let's grab, oh dear, where'd it go? Do I have it? 
Okay, you guys, I'm looking for a half inch strip of paper. Here we go. Because what we're going to do is we're going to stamp our words next that go right here. And it's a half inch strip of Whisper White. Oh, Kathy's telling me it's a great opportunity to embellish the duber, put some bling on it. You know what? That's a very good idea. I am going to do that. All right, so here we have our half inch strip. And then I'm going to grab, let me find it. I have it here. We're going to grab some, what is this called? Blackberry Bliss ink. And then we have our sentiment right here. So I'm going to ink it up. And then we're going to stamp the sentiment. And it's great. It turned out perfect. No dubers there. Oh, I love it. Amy also is saying, there's no mistakes in stamping, just happy accidents or an excuse to embellish. I love it. Thank you. You guys are so nice. Now I'm going to um, use my scissors and we're just going to cut right up the middle of this half inch strip and then we're going to kitty corner cut to the center and make a little tiny pennant. Almost there. And there it is. And then we're going to take a little bit of embellishment here. So I've got these big rhinestones. Now I don't want to put a big rhinestone up here. I'd want to put a real tiny rhinestone. But for the moment, we're going to use a big rhinestone right here. And then we're going to flip it over and use some mini dimensionals again. No, we're not going to use, we're not going to do that that quick. Hold on. I have to trim it off even. So I'm going to hold this up to the edge. Flip it over. I'm going to grab my, my pencil or my pen. Oh, I've got a pencil. Grab my pencil and I'm just going to make a mark back here where I want it trimmed. And then I'm going to trim that up. I'm sure you guys all have different ways of doing this, but that's how I do it because I don't, I couldn't get it flat because of this little guy. So now we're going to turn around and add our mini dimensionals. So we'll put three of them back here. And then that's going to go onto the little panel here that we're going to put on our box. So as you can see, even though this box was really little and it was actually a piece of cake to put the box together, it was more about all the stamping and the coloring and the cutting um, that actually makes this box a little more work. The actual assembly of the box was pretty much easy peasy. So here we go. We have the this cute little thing all ready to go on our box, but... I want to go grab my little tiny rhinestones and and just embellish because I got to I just got to do that. So hold on. Oh, you know what I can use? Oh, this is a good idea. So we've got our big rhinestone here. Well, I've got these little tiny ones that are from the that are called noble peacock rhinestones and there's some pretty colors in here. So I think I'm going to use these because how fun is that? I think I'm going to use green ones. So we've got these cute little green ones and I'm just going to scatter those around. Oh, and we have some pink ones too. I wonder what I should do if I should do green or pink. Oh, the possibilities. Maybe I'll do pink. I don't know when I would use pink ones. This is kind of the ideal opportunity. Nope, I'm not crazy about the pink. I am not going to use the pink. I just held it up there and I was like, nope, nope, it's got to be green. I don't know why, but it just has to be green. So, you know what? I always do these wrong. So, do you guys, have you ever noticed on the Take Your Pick tool, I am constantly using the pointy end? That's because for years and years and years, I use the um, stamp and pierce tool and always use the pointy end for everything. But we, I'm going to put the little stopper on this pointy end. Because really, for little pearls and rhinestones, I should be using the other end. And that's the end that has the putty. So I'm going to take the putty end. And I'm going to grab. Look at that. How easy is that? I'm going to pick that up and put it right over the top of that little duber. And we're going to do that with 
another one. Maybe, let's see, maybe right here. How cute. And where should we put another one? We should have one more, I think. So we have three little green ones. I think we'll go up here. Perfect. So here's our cute little blinged up embellished piece for the front of our box. All right, so let me go ahead. Oh, Amy mentioned you could do a little butterfly or dragonfly over the smudge. The smudge was just so tiny. I don't know if I have what I would need to do that. So I'm going to take some snail. And I'm going to put my box on, my box, finish up my box. So we're just going to layer this right over the top of the front. And it goes flush to the bottom, flush to the sides. Press it down. And there it is. So we have that portion of our project complete. And it looks so good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is make the little 3x3 three three cards. So again, this is going to take like no time at all because we're almost done anyway. So remember I had these little punch outs, right? So that's what we need to make our 3x3 three three card. Let me show you what the 3x3 three three card looks like. It looks like this. And so to make your card base, you're going to need a 3x6 piece of terracotta tile paper. And then I've gone ahead and scored it at 3 inches. And then you'll also want to have on hand, you can purchase these as well from Stampin' Up! The 3x3 three three envelopes that coordinate. And what I'm going to do is just fold this in half. I'm going to use my bone folder, press that down, and there we go. So, first thing we want to do, again, is a little stamping before we get this all layered up. So I'm going to grab my scrap paper here. Put my little circle over the top, and then we're going to stamp where we want the daisies. And again, we're going to use those little cutouts. Let me grab them here so that we know exactly where we need to stamp for our daisies. So again, I made those just with little post-its. I'm going to set those on like so. Actually, I need to bring this up. And then grab your old olive ink again, grab your little daisy uh, stem, and you're just going to stamp once and twice. Then we can take these off, which I want to be careful because I don't want the ink to smear. And sometimes on post-its, just as an FYI, sometimes the ink stays a little wet for a bit, and then when you're grabbing it off with your fingers, uh-oh, then you get ink on your fingers. That's probably how I got my duber the first time, because I think I just grabbed those. All right, now we're going to take those that cute little spray of greenery that comes with the Daisy Delight stamp set, and we're just going to stamp a little sprig of greenery on each side, kind of fill in that space. And then again, we're going to put the Blackberry Bliss accent pieces on that greenery piece. So again, we're just going to ink that up with Blackberry Bliss, hoover it over the top. Let's see, where do we want that? It's a little hard for me because I can't quite see real well because of the camera being in the way but we'll just do the best we can here there we go looks nice now all we have to do is add our uh, daisies and again I did the daisies the exact same way that I did them for the box so I stamped them in terracotta tile I used the smallest little piece the smallest little drop of ink from the terracotta tile and put it on with my clear wink of Stella and it makes that really pretty sparkly flower so we're gonna flip that over and then I'm going to add mini dimensionals to those little flowers and then we're going to add that to our card piece but let's go ahead and just layer this up on the circle here I don't think I need this scrap anymore so it's probably a little more helpful if I do it like this then you can see what's going on 
So let's grab snail. We're going to add some snail to the back of this two inch circle punch out. Add it right here. Just hoover it over the top so that all your borders are nice and even. And I'm going to flip it over, burnish it from the back. Then I'm going to add my little flowers. Whoops, we've got to take the pan, the little, these little guys off first. Then add your flowers. We'll add one way up here so it kind of looks like it's coming off. Oh no, where'd the other one go? Oh, it's stuck to my finger. Then we're going to add the second one right here. And then all that's left is to put it in onto our 3x3 three three card. Do that with a little glue. Add it right here. Of course, with the glue, you have a time, little time to wiggle it into place. And there it is. It's complete. So here are a couple of 3x3 three three cards. And of course, you'd want to have your envelopes with those. I think I have some here. And then your box that you can put your 3x3 three three cards in. You can wrap it up with a little bit of twine. And then you can use this as a treat holder. You can put um, maybe 3x3 three three post-its in here. Or you could do some Ghirardelli chocolates or a little candy bar. And you have a very cute gift that you could give someone. Or if you didn't want to do the chocolate option, which is hard for me to fathom. But if you didn't want to do that option, you could go ahead and uh, um, do a whole bunch of cards. Like you could do at least three or four three by three cards. So thank you so much everybody for watching this today. It was really nice having you here. Next week, I'm going to be focusing on the Good Morning Magnolia Bundle. And I already know which days I'll be uh, sharing a Facebook Live on that. So it will be on Monday and then also again on Friday. So Monday at 10 a.m. and Friday at 10 a.m. next week for the Good Morning Magnolia Bundle. We'll talk to you soon and you guys all have a great weekend. I truly appreciate you being here. Bye-bye.